Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 47 and today we are returning with two massive games of our Lions as we take on Chelsea and Manchester City, both away from home in the Premier League. I will show you Milman getting off camera but before we do that, I'm going to show you a new club record sale from the Den and also a new Wonder Kid arriving in January too. Now this was quite a reluctant sale, if I'm being honest, and you can see the name on the right hand side, you know who's gone. I didn't want to see the guy leave, but he wanted to leave the club, he wanted a new contract but wouldn't listen to talks as he was unhappy at the club. And uh, on deadline day in Germany, on the 31st of August, Stuttgart put in a bid for Christian Gutierrez. We negotiated, we were around 12 to 13 million pounds at first, I got him up to 22 and a half million pounds, and the Uruguayan, who arrived on a free transfer last season, set the Premier League alight in his debut year with 15 goals and 32 games. Gains, leads for £22.5 million pounds, and he's had a very good start in Germany as well already two goals in his first four at Stuttgart so Gutierrez has gone I could have got more money for him don't get me wrong he's now valued at £33 million pounds. could have got more money but this is as high as Stuttgart would go and uh, he wanted to leave he wouldn't really listen to new contract talks and uh, I thought you know what if we're only playing one striker this season as well in a 4-2-3-1 that means this guy's going to slip down to like fourth choice so yeah I thought we'll cash in on him make a profit and to be fair you know one year what a year he had you know 15 goals in 32 games, joint top scorer, and then we make 22 and a half million on a guy. So yeah, not too bad, but uh, I would have rather him stayed, but it was it was sort of not necessarily out of my hands, but it was a reluctant sale. But uh, I'm not too gutted because, well, I can't wait to show you this guy. We've got a new player to replace him coming in in January as this deal was made outside of our transfer window in the Premier League. Julian Benker, welcome to Millwall Football Club in January. This guy looks like an absolute monster. He's described as a wonder kid by the media. You know, I love those wonder kids. And he is like, he's like the upgrade of Christian Gutierrez. He's been capped 14 times by Austria, scored seven goals, has a great goal to game ratio with RB Salzburg. Look at that, just one, or just under one in uh, every game. Absolutely fantastic. And when you look at the guy's stats, he's, he's just a monster physically. He's an absolute powerhouse. He's rapid of 18 acceleration, 16 for pace. He's agile, 16, balance, 17. Uh, strength 17 at six foot one as well. Mentally, he's fantastic. 17 determination. Uh, he's got 15 for off the ball as well. 15 leadership, like a two on a 20 year old, and uh, 15 flair as well. Some great stats here, and technically fantastic as well. 16 finishing, 15 first touch, 15 heading, 16 technique and take penalties as well. He just looks like a monster. And to be signing the guy for what's it going to be? It's 13.25 uh, mil. That was his release clause. What a bargain this guy is going to be at the den next season, uh, in January, sorry, he's coming in January. And again, when you compare him and Gutierrez, he's the upgrade. He's the upgrade and he's two years younger. I, I cannot wait for this guy to come in. So whilst he might have undersold Gutierrez, what a player Julian Benk could be. And we'll find out when he arrives in January. So now let's take a look at what's happened off camera. Sorry, that's took a while. But uh, I'll show you what's been on off camera and how the Lions have started the season off. So, of course, in the last episode, you saw the goal of straw to start a new season off, uh, a nil-nil away at Pride Park. I then played six games off camera, and we've had a decent start to the season. Uh, we began our home stint this year with a nil-nil draw against Southampton, so no goals or wins in our first two games. However, we picked it up in midweek with our first victory of the season, coming in the Carabao Cup second round away against Luton Towns. You won by three goals to nil. Uh, Enzo scoring our first of the season. Ten minutes after the restart, then late on in the game, as it was coming to Close Black made it 2-0 uh, for Mauricio Martinez. Scored his first goal for the club in stoppage time. A 3-0 victory there away at Kenilworth Road. Uh, and following that, another draw in the Premier League. Free to start off with, but this time some goals. 1-1 uh, away against Leicester, where Reddy Naldo scored his first goal for the club. Delighted to see that. It was the Brazilian boys as well linking up. Luiz and Reddy Naldo are two new Brazilians uh, getting uh, the goal there with Luiz getting the assist and Reddy Naldo with the goal uh, for Son equaliser the Foxes in a 1-1 draw. So so no wins in our first three Premier League games, but then back-to-back -back victories followed with the same scoreline. First a 1-0 victory against West Brom at home. Matt O'Reilly, the former Fulham man, giving us the only goal of the game and our first three points of the season. And then a 1-0 victory over the Canaries as Reddy Naldo scored his second in three as we got a big three points there to continue our undefeated start to the Premier League. But sadly, in midweek, we did taste our first defeat of the season. Coming in the Carabao Cup third round, uh, we took on Liverpool at the Den and we lost by three goals to two. Um, Rec did give us the lead in this game just six minutes in uh, before Luan, who you might actually remember I had in my Hamburg career mode back in 2016, made it 1 1 as the Reds go back on level terms. Then just past the hour mark, a bit of bad luck. Uh, ben Chilwell with an own goal uh, for six minutes later, 
3 1 up. And we actually got an own goal in our favor as well. Marcos Alonso, six minutes for the break, uh, six minutes for the end, sorry. But in the end, it was just a consolation goal as the game did finish three goals to two. The Reds march on, and we are out of the Carabao Cup with our first defeat of the season. But not too fussed about it. We did reach the final last year, but it's always our lowest priority. We feel the weakened side, so not too fussed. But in the Premier League, it's been a very good start, though. As you can see by the table right now, we're currently sitting in eighth place. We're one of just two sides who are undefeated. The other team is Man City, who we faced today in the second game. And we also got the joint best defensive record to start the division off. Just one goal conceded in our first five games. I said defense is a priority this season. We really have improved it. And we're seeing the, uh, the dividends paid in the league table as well. So delighted with that. Anyway, don't see our defense doing very well in the two games today. They've got Chelsea away at the bridge. who are off to a red heart start right now. As you can see, four wins in their first five as they sit top of the table. And I'm pretty sure we'll lose both our games today. But let's find out how we get on. The 4-2-3-1, though, is working quite nicely at the moment, especially defensively. And how much do you want to bet we can see nine goals in the two games today? Okay, so this is our team for the game then. Everyone is fully fit for the game, and this will be our lineup. We've got Lunen in goal, about for a Tymon, Jordan, Maori, and Bree. Our midfield duo is Dobby and Cooley Barley. And our attacking midfield trio is Louise, O'Reilly, and Webster, supporting Reddy Naldo as our lone striker. And on the bench, Petkovic, Fry, Ahulmada, The Dream, Willet Kuchar, and Enzo as well. So first game is Chelsea. Let's see who can see the undefeated start. Come on, you Lions. Obviously, last season, towards the end of the year, we faced Chelsea away at the bridge, and we actually won by three goals to two. An amazing scalp. I believe our first away scalp of the series. Uh, but I don't see lightning striking twice. I'm pretty sure we're going to lose this game, and probably convincingly as well. And the first chance has resulted in the first goal. Diamico with the assist, Moise Keane with the finish, and already Chelsea in front, nine minutes in. This could be a very long afternoon. Chelsea, one of the sides in FM, one of the big teams, I should say, who I pretty much always lose to. And whilst we did win last season away at the bridge, I can't see it happening again. Keane with the finish, 1-0 Chelsea. And this may well be the first loss we have of our 4-2-3-1 as well. Not going to hit the panic button, the band or anything but it'll be a shame to see our undefeated start of it end here but uh, we are behind already and Chelsea coming through again here Keane the goal scorer on the ball plays that wide towards Henricks and the left back into Fernandez. Oh, wonderful little dinked ball inside to Hazard. But the flag was up for offside anyway. Now free kick for Chelsea. D'Amico shot deflects. Oh, kindly bounces to Ron McNally. And Chelsea go two goals to good. But that's also been disallowed for offside. And uh, the ball in the back of the net for the second time. But once again, the line is flagging. So it's still 1-0. But it's all Chelsea to start the game off, as we expected. By the way, Chelsea have got a right back called Petrini who's starting this game as well. I checked him out in uh, in the preseason because he moved for a big fee from Atalanta, I think it was. He's unbelievable. And I love to checking the big teams out as the save goes on and seeing what new gen slash regens they pick up. He's probably one of the best right backs I've ever seen in, in FM. I'll, I'll try and remind myself to... Uh, to show you come the end of the game. But it is still 1-0 to the break. So we're still definitely in this. Haven't done much of yet. But you never know. Could still turn this game on its head. We're far from finished. But as the second half gets underway, there's a chance early for Chelsea. And what were the chances that was going to happen 20 seconds after I said we're far from finished. And Chelsea doubled their lead. And it's Moise Keane doing it once again. He was great in my Palermo club and country save a few months ago. But it's a shame to watch him scoring against me. That was a really nice header. And to be fair, a nice goal from the Blues there, right from kickoff, Cone with the cross, and someone misjudged his header inside the area, I think it might be Maori, and Keane capitalises, 2-0 to the Blues, and maybe we are finished after all. Oh man, if things can get any worse as well, Tymon is now coming off with an injury, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll push Jordan's play out as left back, which you can do, and I'll bring on Dale Friday in a centre back role. But uh, that's that's a shame. Our new club record signing injured as well. This is not the start to the episode I wanted. So this is going to be back-to-back -back defeats for the Lions then. And our first loss in the Premier League this year as well. And that's a bit of a shame. And it has been a good start to the season regardless of the result. But the one big concern for me is we're not scoring many goals. We, we've done a good job of shutting oppositions out. This is the first game this season minus the Carabao Cup game where we conceded more than once in a game. But we're, we're not scoring many. And when you put a new striker on 75 grand a week and you sold last year's joint highest scorer, well, 
I'm far from pleased with that, and I'm far from pleased with what I saw from the team. To be fair, our stats weren't that bad, so I'll say unlucky boys, it would have been nice to win there, wasn't to be, and everyone's getting confidence and relaxed and motivated, because when you look at the stats actually of the game, we didn't we didn't actually do that badly. It's just Chelsea were clinical and definitely deserved the three points, no question there. So our first loss of the season, timing out three to four weeks. This is not the way I wanted to start the episode off. Let's just move on to the City game, and uh, maybe I'll change the tactics for the game as well. Maybe that will help us get back on the winning wagon. Oh yeah, and uh, Petrini, Petrini, where are we? Petrini, the, uh, the right back. He's unbelievable. Um, just absolutely staggering stats on this guy. I mean, just extraordinary. He's got stats literally all across the board. And whilst he's a right back by trade and described as an elite fullback, this guy could play literally anywhere. And I think personally, as a central midfielder, he'd be amazing as a deep lying or an advanced playmaker with 15 first touch, 15 dribbling, 16 passing, 16 techniques, 17 vision, 17 work rate, 20 determination. I want him so badly. He's got some incredible stats, man. Just without question, one of the best right backs I've ever seen on FM. But the guy doesn't have to play right back. He can play anywhere and be one of the best players I've ever seen. He's extraordinary. So moving on to the second and final game of today's episode then as we take on the current champions Manchester City and I'm pretty confident we're going to get fresh here away at the Etihad Stadium. Uh, it's also my eight, uh, sorry, I was going to say 800th, uh, my 300th uh, game in charge as well. And I'd like us to mark it with a win, but uh, I'm, I'm quite pessimistic at that. But I will switch the tactics into the game. I'm going to go back to the 5-3-2. Lose quite a lot last season. And hopefully due to our lack of goal scoring this season, having two boys up top, we'll see us get a few more goals on board. And uh, and yeah, let's find out. Of course, Tom's injured for the game. Uh, Kirk's on his national duty. I thought he was under, under 23s. We should be. And um, and yeah, so let's go with this line then and see how we get on. So we've got Loon in goal still. It's now a back five of Chilwell and Breeze our Wing backs and a back three of Jordan. Can I just re rename him Jordan? I think I will do. Uh, Hendry making his debut for Milton in this game and uh, Maori as well. Our midfield trio is Koulibaly, Dobby, and O'Reilly dropping a little bit deeper but still in the same role. And up top together, Ready Naldo and our new club captain, Moret Kuchar. And on the bench, it's Pekovic, it's Fry, it's Ahumada, it's the Dream, Louise Webster, who I should say is, is Enzo's there as well, scored his first goal uh, for England too against the Fair Islands, which is really, really cool. But so that's our bench, that's our lineup. This is the team. And this is the game. Come on, you Lions. Let's bounce back and make sure we don't have three defeats in a row. Come on. Webster's development, by the way, absolutely fantastic. But that just goes to show you how important it is to have a really great coaching staff and to make sure you play your young players. They're not going to develop if you're not playing them or you've not loaned them out or to get first team football. And uh, having a great coaching staff really helps as well. Having good facilities helps as well. So Clinton right now, it's, it's such a shame when we play the 5-3-2, we can't play him. He could operate in a right wing back role, but it's a bit of a waste. We could play him centrally, but I'm not sure he's best suited to that really. But uh, he's, he's been incredible to start the season off. And he, he genuinely could be, as Zivkovic fires over there, bold statement. But he genuinely could be the best player I've ever had in an FM save on YouTube. As Kevin De Bruyne takes the ball at the halfway line and plays that wide towards Sergio Roberto. That's a bold statement, considering the players we've had in previous saves. As Harry Kane finds space and shoots and scores. And what is right now, for me, the current top scorer in the World Cup makes it 1-0. And my City go in front. The former Spurs man have a really deft finish there past Lunin. And already we trail by a goal. Roberto with a cross, Kane with a, uh, Kane with a control and the finish. What a powerful effort. Into the back of the net, 1-0. Obviously with Portugal playing in ooh, 10 minutes for me. Uh, Ronaldo might go ahead and reclaim his position as the leading goal scorer in the competition. But uh, the, the Kane hat-trick against Panama was just interesting, wasn't it? Two penalties and then that bizarre flick, which I'm not sure was intentional. But uh, England had a fantastic start to the competition and uh, hopefully they can get a result against Belgium as well and uh, progress to knockout stages as group winners. But as we are approaching the end of the first half, it's still 1-0. And uh, this is just like the Chelsea game, you know. You know, we've, we've not done too badly in terms of the stats. It's just our hosts have taken the chance they've got. And that's why they lead. So at the break, I'm going to say to the boys, I said unlucky uh, against Chelsea. That didn't really work out for us. So what I'll say is I know a lot of you will be keen to avenge what happened when we played, last played Man City. Go out there and express yourselves. We've motivated quite a few players, though. I will individually criticise the defence to fire them up and the midfield as well. And let's see if, unlike against Chelsea, we don't start the second half off by conceding, but we started off by scoring and getting back on level terms. Come on. 
Well, it's a free kick for Manchester City, and it looks like they're going to double their feet. <laughs> and that's exactly what's happened, and it's pretty much deja vu. Okay, a little bit longer it took than the Chelsea game, but Man City are in front, uh, sorry, double their lead with uh, <laughs> 13 minutes after restart. Oh, Carry Kane bagging his brace and uh, making it 2 0, and showing he's just as prolific as he is in the game as he is in, in real life. 2 0, and uh, a nice little finish there. And uh, yeah, we, we trail by two. And just like a Stamford Bridge, we're not getting back into this one. So it's going to be three defeats on the trot then. But to be fair, a weak inside against Liverpool and then Chelsea and Manchester City away. It, it was to be expected. I don't think it would have mattered what tactics we used. I was pretty confident we'd lose both of these games just coolly. Barley had a nice little strike there, but it just wide the post. He only scored one goal last season, a tap-in. And that would have been an incredible goal for his first of the new year. But uh, still 2-0 and, and the game's over. Are we going back to the old 4-4-2 for the next game? Not entirely sure. We did use it in uh, our Carabao Cup win over Luton and in our defeat to Liverpool as well. So we've used three different tactics for our last three games and we've had three separate defeats. So maybe it's a new system to try next. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, I, I do like the 4-2-3-1 though. I must say we started off well with it and I'd like to continue with it too. As uh, Enzo with a poor pass there, has it intercepted by Raheem Sterling, lazy from our giant striker. And now Zivkovic is on the ball, City can make it 3-0 here. There's number 11 goes down left-hand side, crosses and oh, hit the post! Was that, uh, must have been a cross, just an unintentional effort that almost went in, off the woodwork and then Lunin made a really good save there to keep it at 2-0. Speaking of the World Cup as well, by the way, as Enzo goes for goal, but Edison makes the save. How great was it to see the celebrations when Panama scored their first goal in the World Cup? Like, obviously they were going to lose, they know that, but it was it was so cool, you know, they, they were so joyous, and that's that's what the World Cup's all about. I saw great videos as well of the England fans and the Panama fans celebrating together. It's, it's, it's nice when, you know, the World Cup brings people together, and uh, that was a... A, a good a good win for England, a, a great game from Kane, five for the tournament in, in two games, and a great to see all the fans celebrating together as well. But that wasn't great. Uh, back to back defeats today, as we expected. Now three in a row, Tywin's out for three weeks, Redinaldo's out for two weeks, my 300th game in charge ends with a loss. We've now conceded four in our, uh, five in our last two. And uh, after a great, uh, sorry, four in the last two, and after a great defensive start, six goals conceded in our last three, slipping down the table to 11th. Yeah, I prematurely was celebrating our good form to start the campaign off. Now we're back to the middle wall of hold. But that went in today's episode of the Football Manager series, guys. A big thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like, as like, so of course, very much appreciated. And you're out channel out as well. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. Enjoy the World Cup today as well. And I will see you for the next episode in my Football Manager series with gains against. Let's gather a bit of pace and let's come back in November to December. I'll tell you what, nice little double header there. Bournemouth away and then Manchester United at home. How about that? So we'll come back for that double header and uh, yeah, I'll see you for the next episode very soon. Bye.